Code reviews are widely adopted as a valuable practice. But like any good practice, when taken too far, code reviews can hurt the flow of value and reduce overall team productivity. Here are 7 proven practices for making your code reviews more effective. But number 5 is probably the one you will resist the most. Before we dive in, why do we review code in the first place? We review to ensure the code meets team standards. Linters and architectural checks should handle the basics, but common practices in the team are best assessed through reviews. We review to validate design choices. Ideally, design discussions happen before any code is written to avoid waste. But reviews are a great way to catch misunderstandings or mismatches between intent and implementation. We review to spot bugs that are hard to catch with tests, like missing edge cases, invalid domain assumptions or potential concurrency problems. We review to keep refactoring safe. When done in small controlled steps, reviews can confirm that behavior hasn't changed, sometimes even more efficiently than running a full regression test suite. And above all, we review to ensure code quality. Is the code clear, understandable and maintainable, or does it introduce avoidable complexity? Beyond code, reviews spread knowledge across the team, about the code base, the domain and coding practices in general. So code reviews offer many benefits, but they are not free. That's why these seven practices matter. Number one, review one logical change at the time. Let's start with the obvious one. Code reviews take time. While reviewing your code, reviewers obviously can't work on their own tasks. Therefore, as authors, we should make the reviewer's job as efficient as possible. Even before making a change, ask yourself, would design discussions come up during review? If so, have that discussion before writing the code. Once you're ready to send the change, help the reviewer to get into the context quickly. Write a clear commit message. If more background is needed, share that upfront. And most importantly, avoid mixing multiple logical changes in one commit. It increases cognitive load on the reviewer and the time needed for the review. Instead, send small and focused changes for review. Number 2. Minimize context switches. The cost of a review isn't just the time spent on the code. There is also the cost of switching context, from the reviewer's current task to the review and then back again. To reduce that cost, as a reviewer, schedule reviews around natural breaks in your day. In the morning, before starting your own work. After lunch, before resuming your tasks. At the end of the day. Or just after finishing a task and before starting a new one. While scheduling reviews this way cuts the cost of context switching in half, it does require more coordination in the team if you are doing live reviews. Number 3. Prefer asynchronous reviews. Live reviews, where the author walks the reviewer through the change, makes it much easier to resolve issues than offline discussions. But this approach is often inefficient. Either the reviewer is pulled into the session on short notice, causing a hard context switch. Or it requires coordination effort to schedule a meeting at natural breaks, as explained earlier. More importantly, if the reviewer needs a walkthrough to understand the change, the review is less effective. That's often a sign of a deeper issue. For example, the change is too large, the code is too complex, or the required context wasn't provided upfront. And if the explanation only exists in the live session, how does the next person get that knowledge? Number 4. Focus feedback on what matters. When reviewing code, we may have many suggestions, but every well-intended suggestion also creates effort for the reviewer. So, the more the better is not the best strategy. Instead, be intentional. If your finding is critical and should block further integration, say so clearly and send it back for rework. If the code is working but needs some cleanup, ask the author to fix it later when no hard context switch is required. If your comment is more a general suggestion for future work, Share it outside the review tool. And if the code is just good enough and your comment is just your personal preference, don't send the feedback at all. Align as a team on clear criteria for when a review is considered complete. This helps to focus on what really matters and avoids wasting time on philosophical debates. Number 5. Use non-blocking code reviews. This is probably the one you will find hardest to agree with. Even so code reviews bring high value, we can't lose sight of the real goal. To ship it. The goal is to get the code into production, not to prove how clever we are. So ask yourself, do your code reviews frequently catch bugs or are your tests doing this instead? If the main focus of your code review is on code quality and poor quality code isn't technically a bug, should reviews really block integration? 
Why shouldn't it be okay to integrate code within your team before review? And can we even accept integrating code with other teams or even deploying it to production before review? I clearly prefer non-blocking code reviews, where code gets reviewed after integration. They avoid delays, shorten feedback cycles and encourage smaller, more frequent changes. But as this heavily depends on your team and project setup, you need to decide consciously as a team. Number 6. Choose reviews consciously. Another important aspect, more about effectiveness than efficiency, is how you choose the right reviewer. From my perspective, healthy teams live a culture of trust and continuous learning. In such teams, in principle, anyone is allowed to review anyone else's code. New team members, especially juniors, might have a designated coach who also acts as a default reviewer. But over time, developers should choose reviewers who know the most about the particular code and can give the most valuable feedback. Avoid always reviewing with the same person. You will miss the opportunity for new perspectives. Avoid requiring every commit by a junior to be reviewed by a senior. Seniors become bottlenecks and might get demotivated. Not every change from a junior requires a senior's approval. Other juniors may be able to review it just fine. Let juniors review senior code too. This way, juniors learn from senior experience and can also provide valuable feedback on complexity. If juniors understand it, the code is likely simple and maintainable. Finally, mixing reviews frequently improves knowledge sharing even more. Number 7. Practice team reviews. Speaking of sharing knowledge, team reviews are one of the best ways I know to do it. The idea is simple. Schedule a regular slot every week. Randomly pick recent changes or let authors bring in code they want feedback on. Then review it as a group and discuss questions and comments together. When we started team reviews, they weren't very efficient initially. We spent way too much time on minor details like coding styles. But over time, we started having great discussions about design and even requirements that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And if reviewing every commit isn't required for compliance, team reviews might even replace your regular gated reviews. Are you still working with pull requests? Then watch this video to discover the dark side of pull requests now.